So, Mortal Kombat 1 is on its way, and it's got me thinking about the potential of a DC vs. Marvel crossover game. You might not think it, but the two companies have had a handful of crossovers in the comics before, with the last one all the way back in 2003. And if you ask me, with how much has changed and how many new characters have been introduced since then, it's high time that we see these characters meet once again. It's not an original idea by any means, but I think a fighting game would be a great way to see those interactions and matchups come to life in a new and exciting way. For example, maybe Ant-Man could have a fatality kind of move, where he shrinks down really small, takes a deep breath, and then This video is brought to you by Displate. When I started doing this whole YouTube thing and when I started getting sponsors and stuff, there were like a handful of different brands that I've always wanted to work with, and Displate is one of those brands. Displate is a one-of-a-kind metal poster designed to capture your unique passions. They've created a 21st century canvas that's sturdy, magnet-mounted, and durable enough to withstand a lifetime of intense staring. They have a ton of different options, including licensed options from Marvel and DC, as well as gaming, film, sports, whatever your passion might be. And they even have a ton of premium artist designs from some people you might recognize on social media. I'm, of course, really into comic books, and I really love that sort of retro comic cover style of poster. And so I got a set of three for my favorite characters that go really well together. Also, I got this really cool Miles Morales Spider-Man one, which I love. And me and my partner are really big fans of Kiki's Delivery Service. So I got this really cute print of that for the both of us. I love this thing. It's adorable. The print quality is amazing on all of these. I was honestly a little bit worried that they'd come out fuzzy, but they're so crisp and the colors are gorgeous. I really love them. It only takes 20 seconds to set up and with no power tools and no damage to your wall using Displace magnet mounting system. And the best part is if I ever don't like the placement or if they're not lined up the way I want, or if I just want to switch things up, I'm able to do that without any stress. Seriously, Displate is really, really cool. It's a good alternative to standard paper impressions or canvas printing. It's even cheaper using the discount in my link down below. And thanks to Displate for sponsoring this video. Marvel and DC are no strangers to the crossover fighting game and yet have never crossed paths in that way, which I guess isn't surprising given all the company politics, but also sort of is surprising purely based on how much comic book fans constantly debate about who would win in a fight. I mean, if Mickey the Mouse can cross over with all the Final Fantasies, I feel like anything's possible. Ed Boon, the co-creator of Mortal Kombat and Injustice, has even said in the past, that he's interested in the concept, and NetherRealm Studios have reportedly been in talks to make a Marvel-related project, so it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. Now, whether or not this hypothetical game would actually be developed by NetherRealm, I could go either way on. They have their fair share of quirks and problems, but I personally enjoy their fighting games. I put an absurd amount of hours into Injustice 2, and so I'm of course going to be biased when it comes to that style and that system. But there are plenty of other great fighting game developers and studios who could equally do a great job with the Marvel versus DC idea. If it were to be developed by NetherRealm, I wouldn't want it to be just an Injustice sequel with Marvel characters slapped onto it. A lot of the default character designs aren't great. I don't really love the clash mechanic. I can't stand the gear system. The animations could definitely use some work. Don't even get me started on evil Superman as a concept. And I think overall the game prioritized zoning just a little bit too much, but maybe that's just my fault as Black Canary main. Something like Marvel vs. Capcom on the other hand gets a little bit too flashy for me. I'm not huge on the full screen attacks and all the craziness. I sort of just get overwhelmed with everything, but I know that that's a core part of those games and something that a lot of people like. And so I think there's a middle ground to be found between what Injustice and Mortal Kombat are doing and what Marvel does. I like the pacing of a Mortal Kombat style round based system, but I do really like the tag team mechanic from Marvel vs. Capcom and how it adds a lot more variety to the matches, so I think that there's a way to incorporate something similar, which I'll talk about later. Really, the most difficult thing when trying to talk about this idea and come up with this pitch is figuring out the roster for the game, because it's always going to feel like someone's being left out. For something like Injustice, which was solely about DC characters, each of those games had a starting roster of 28. That was enough to, in my opinion, cover a decent variety of the universe, including the big heavy hitters like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, as well as some lesser knowns and fan favorites like Swamp Thing, Lobo, and Atrocitus. However, a game with both Marvel and DC characters characters, even with increasing the base roster size to something like 36, which is really big for a modern fighting game, when you split it down the middle, you end up being forced to cut some characters that feel pretty essential to the universe, especially when you also try and throw some villains into the mix. A way to help with this a little bit is to include something like Injustice 2's premiere skins, which I don't think that they used nearly enough in that game. It was a skin that you applied to a character that kept their base moveset, but changed their appearance, the effects around their moves, their voice lines, and their name. Superman became Bizarro, Captain Cold became Mr. Freeze, Cheetah became Vixen, Hal Jordan became Jon Stewart, the list goes on. And so you could do something similar similar with this kind of game, allowing you to feature more character interactions without having to design a hundred separate fighting game characters, because that is honestly where the bulk of fighting game development goes into designing the characters. There are a lot of comic book characters that have a quote unquote equivalent over the other company in terms of power sets, and it wouldn't be too insane to have them share a moveset. And maybe their intros and their super moves could be different to better reflect their character. Maybe they become unlockable characters, something that shows up while playing through towers or single player, and it adds another option on the character select. The first DC characters would of course be Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and The Flash, who I consider to be the four core pillars of the universe. And for Marvel, the first batch is Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, and the Hulk. I'm going through them in like batches so I'm not spending like an hour 
just talking about the roster. The Flash could have skins for the other DC speedsters, as well as Marvel's Quicksilver. Spider-Man could have skins that lead change from Peter Parker to Miles Morales. Iron Man could have a War Machine skin, and Captain America could maybe have a Sam Wilson option. Of course, any direct parallel, like Marvel Squadron Supreme, would be a good skin. Marvel has like three Superman equivalents, so like, go crazy with that. You could maybe get away with giving Batman a skin to turn him into Moon Knight, but that sort of feels reductive, since Moon Knight's more than just Marvel's Batman, and it would sort of depend on the rest of Batman's moveset, so I don't really know about that. And I think a great skin for the Hulk would actually be Doomsday, since let's be real, Doomsday is just a spiky gray version of the Hulk. There's, name one other thing about his character. I'm sorry, you can't. Back to DC, I'd want to see Green Lantern, Aquaman, Green Arrow, and Black Canary. Aquaman could have a skin for Namor, and Green Arrow could share a slot with Hawkeye. Whoever the primary Green Lantern is, I'd want to see skins for all the other notable lanterns, maybe even Sinestro, if that works. And if you try and tell me that Green Arrow and Black Canary aren't popular enough to justify taking up a slot, it's my video, shut up, I need somebody to main. At Marvel, the next batch is Wolverine, Ant-Man, Black Panther, and Thor. Ant-Man could have a skin for DC's Adam, and I think a really fun Black Panther skin would be for the Prowler, since they could share a lot of similar moves with their claws. And for Wolverine, I'd want to see a Laura Kinney skin, as well as a Jane Foster skin for Thor. Gender swaps when it comes to skins might be sort of difficult in terms of animations and hitboxes, but it would allow for a lot more modern legacy characters to be included, and maybe there could be some competitive advantage to one or the other. On the DC side, I think Cyborg, Robin, and Vixen would be great picks. Vixen was a skin for Cheetah in Injustice 2, but I'd want to see her be her own character here. Her gameplay could incorporate a wide variety of all her other animal abilities, and that would actually make Beast Boy a perfect skin for her. Daredevil, Captain Marvel, and Scarlet Witch are all a must. Daredevil could have a skin for Nightwing, since they could easily share a moveset, and it's why I chose Robin over at DC. Captain Marvel could have a skin for Monica Rambo, but I also think that their moveset shows a lot of similarities to Starfire, with the flight and the energy blast. And the same for Scarlet Witch having a skin for Raven. This lets us have a lot of the core, popular Teen Titans characters, as well as a beefy Justice League roster, without having to design them all from scratch. Speaking of Captain Marvel, I think it'd be really fun if DC had Shazam, and there could be conversations and interactions between the two about their name. He could maybe also have a Black Adam skin to get some of that Dwayne Johnson marketability, because I don't really know. I feel like Black Adam was put in everything because of Dwayne Johnson, and now it's like, now we're in a post-Black Adam movie world, and I'm like, are, do they do they want to still push that character? I don't know. I feel like they don't. I feel like it was really just because of the movie. But, you know, if you, you could fit him in there. Like, why not? I'd also want to see Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, as well as Static, who could maybe have an Electro skin. I think it'd be really interesting to see the Fantastic Four take up a single character slot where he plays the thing and the moveset incorporates the remaining three. A great skin for them would be the Terrifics or Doom Patrol, because they're... DC has two Fantastic Four equivalents. Three, I guess, if you want to count Cyborg Superman and his dead family. Uh, and I think that's really funny. You, of course, need Doctor Strange, who could easily have a Doctor Fate skin, and Storm is a huge must on the X-Men side. Maybe she could have a Livewire skin? I don't know. She's not an electricity-based superhero. She's a weather-based superhero. But everybody likes to group her in with the electricity-based superheroes. I was like, that's not what she does. When it comes to the villains, I didn't want to take up too much space on the roster and overlook some of the heroes. But at DC, I think we need Darkseid, Deathstroke, Harley Quinn, and unfortunately, Joker. I know he's so oversaturated and it doesn't really make sense that he's in the context of a fighting game. But like... I just, I, I don't know, I feel like legally I have to include him. Darkseid could maybe have a Thanos skin and Deathstroke could have a skin to turn him into Deadpool since they came first. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. For real though, I could actually go either way on who's defined as the main version of a character and who's the faker. Comparing yourself to me? Huh. You're not even good enough to be I'll my make you eat those words. It mostly depends on who's like more marketable. And I guess Deadpool is more marketable than Deathstroke, but I want to keep each side like somewhat even. And lastly, for the Marvel villains, I'd want to see Venom, Juggernaut, Magneto, and Doctor Doom. And I know Magneto isn't really a villain anymore, and I prefer when he's not treated that way, but neither is Harley Quinn. I'm doing my goddamn best over here. This is not, this is, re this is really difficult. I thought this would be like a fun, silly, easy video. So that's a really big roster of characters, especially when you take into account the skins and the variants of everyone and the the sheer variety of voice lines that would have to go into something like that, even more so when so many developers seem to just outright ignore the wishes of their voice actors. But the idea of DC versus Marvel is a huge concept, and still, even with that stacked cast and 36 slots, I couldn't help but feel like a ton of beloved characters were being completely left out of this kind of event. And so another way to really squeeze the most out of characters that could be included in a game like this and really maximize the potential of Marvel versus DC would be to do something similar to Mortal Kombat 1's cameo system. In that game, there's an additional character you select before starting a fight, and during the match, you press a button and that character character will assist you in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's a launcher or a teleport or an ice ball, whatever suits the character and whatever suits your playstyle. In this case, I'll be calling them team ups and they can work in two different ways. When you pick your fighter, you have a choice of a team up character, including the entirety of the playable roster, as well as an equal sized roster of additional characters. 72 characters. Actually, now that I think about it, that's way too big. The additional characters would work just like the cameos in Mortal Kombat. There's a button you push and the character comes out onto the screen and assists you in some way. This can let us get characters like Atrocitus or Crypto or Lockjaw into a game without feeling like a character slot is 
being taken up. And if you pick a character who's a member of the main roster, their assists aren't nearly as powerful, but you have the ability to switch between those two characters and tag team out. You'd have to fine tune it to not be broken and make sure both kinds of characters are worth choosing. I'm not sure about the technical side of it all and how you can make that work, but I think that's a way to include some form of Marvel's tag team system, but also find its own identity. And they open up even more possibilities than just surface level character inclusion. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is seeing a big resurgence lately, despite not having been supported in years, in large part due to the mods for the game. Modders are creating entirely new characters, and that's revitalizing a 12 year old game and bringing it back to life without any work from the developer. And so who's to say that if these characters have models and voice lines built into the game, that couldn't encourage modders to do the same thing. I just really want Crypto to be a playable character in some way or another, and I feel like I'm never going to live to see that day. When it comes to the story of the game, there are a ton of different directions you could go. You could of course pull from the original 1996 comic event, or 2003's JLA Avengers, or you could do something similar to Jonathan Hickman's 2015 Secret Wars, which had an issue where the Avengers were forced to fight against a clear parody of the DC Universe to show how far they'd fallen. Or fuck it, you could dig up the Watchmen characters for the millionth time and turn them into a fighting game to make Alan Moore roll around in his grave. He's not dead or anything, he just sleeps in a coffin. But I think it'd be really interesting to take inspiration from the original Secret Wars from back in 1984, which featured the Beyonder pitting a selection of heroes and villains against each other for the fate of the universe. But instead of the Beyonder, it's a mystery who the villains are, and halfway through the game we reveal who's behind it all. Mr. Mixa Spitlick. And Gwenpool. When you think of a DC versus Marvel crossover, you expect this big, grand, larger than life, serious saga. Massive giants coming together and trading blows and seeing who ends up victorious. But I think it'd be really fun to go the opposite direction and really lean into the silliness of it all and almost make it a meta commentary on the fandoms and the quote unquote rivalry as a whole. Because for those who don't know, Gwenpool isn't just girl Deadpool, firstly we already have one of those, but where Deadpool is a comic book character who knows he's in a comic book, Gwenpool is literally a comic book fan who comes from the real world before being transported into the Marvel Universe. And so the fourth wall breaks and the meta humor is on a completely different level and her stories are able to do a ton of really fun stuff. She's a great character that a lot of comic fans love and I swear to God, if you call her Gwen Stacy, I will find you. And Mr. Mixa Spitlick on the other hand isn't really as metatextual, but he has the power set and the chaotic energy to back it up. He's one of my favorite Superman villains and I think he has a lot of potential for something like this. Mixa Spitlick and Gwenpool could meet in the space between their dimensions and they get into an argument about which universe is better. At which point they agree to a competition. The two of them each choose a team of heroes from both the Marvel and the DC Universe and force them all to duke it out on a planet that they created, a mishmash of the DC and Marvel worlds, featuring both iconic landmarks as well as spots where the two merge. And whichever team loses will have their world destroyed completely. Maybe they normalize everybody's power levels a little bit, just so Superman could throw a punch at Hawkeye without accidentally turning into the Injustice version. And to add in a little bit of spice, they also create a third team featuring villains from both universes to inspire the heroes a little bit more. In a story like this, we'll be able to have your iconic matchups, Superman versus Hulk, Batman versus Spider-Man, Wonder Woman versus Thor, you know, all the stuff that you'd put on the cover to sell copies. We could see Superman lift Thor's hammer, introduce a Mal characters into the mix like Dark Claw and Spider Boy, but also try and say something a bit deeper about the mentality behind Versus Debates, the two publishers, and the reality of their rivalry. Regardless of the actual story, I think that any kind of crossover between the two companies would have to really emphasize the idea that it's not Marvel versus DC, it's Marvel and DC. Because as much as some people want to pit the two against each other and frame them like some mortal enemies, that's not really how it goes. At least on the comics front, there are artists and creators who make books for both companies, who read and love the work from the other side, and will share their love for not just a company name, but for the comics medium and storytelling as a whole. I mean, that's not even limited to just DC and Marvel. Look at how some people treat PlayStation versus Xbox, framing them as bitter rivals who hate each other, saying that Alana Pierce should be fired from Sony Santa Monica because she's playing Starfield. What really, it's not that deep, dude. And you might be saying that something like this is entirely impossible, that the two companies just wouldn't play nice and there would never be any crossover outside of Batman and Spider-Man hitting the gritty in Fortnite. And you very well might be right. Business politics have felt increasingly more and more hostile as of late. I think a reason that we haven't seen any kind of crossover in the past 20 years is because now both of these companies have grown so much more than just comics and are now owned and operated by two of the biggest media conglomerates in the world. They're no longer just two companies publishing comics at the same time. It's all about IP and branding and movies and games and merchandise, billions and billions of dollars at stake. Hell, sometimes it even feels like the comics aren't even the priority. And that kind of sucks because in whatever form it may take, whether that be a comic or a movie or a fighting game, seeing something like this would honestly be kind of a life-changing event. But it feels so out of reach because these companies and the huge amounts of money that gets poured into them. I mean, let's be real, the only thing that these two disgustingly huge corporations can agree to is to not pay their actors and their writers the value of their work and their collective desire to replace them with AI and fundamentally kill art as we know it. But in an ideal situation, barred from the limits of what's realistic and possible, a celebration of these characters and these stories and seeing them come together once more after over 20 years will be so incredible. And then imagine the kinds of guest characters that they could do, like Darth Vader or Invincible or fucking Goku. Could you imagine? That'd be so cool. Matchups and character interactions that people have been begging to see for decades just out of reach because the limitations of company politics and IP. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe it'll just be a Lego game. 
that'd be that'd be cool too but what would you want to see from a marvel versus dc crossover either for a fighting game or a comic book or anything else and if you liked this video be sure to like button and subscribe special links to 21 escalators alto the sting and cabbage boy calamari 13 chicken mcdoofus cosmic tragedy deco py egan mcfarlane eden kenna iron ninja jake selig jonah pencil fan simply dan tim newfeld troy says by Rager is lame tyler goodrich yush kapoor zachary stonebreaker and zero to hero 148 for being spectacular fanboys on my patreon this has been troy boys 17 coming at you live be responsible and i'll see you around